This is the story of the dynamic film and the story of my interest into the coccyx. I've always had a great interest in, in back pain. And regarding coccyx pain, it's uh, something interesting. It started with a patient, who, uh, a lady who was referred to me by a colleague, an orthopedic surgeon, who didn't want to operate at home. He told me that uh, he was afraid of the outcomes, didn't know very well this pathology, and it was the same for me. I treated her with uh, manipulation, and it was a, a complete failure, and I was very disappointed. Maybe one or two months later, I had, I think, uh, an excellent idea, which was that uh, maybe coccyx pain was similar to low back pain, and low back pain, in many cases, is due to a problem within the disc, to the lumbar disc. There are many different problems in the disc, disc herniations, discopathies, inflammation, instability and so on, but it comes from the disc in maybe at least one third of the cases. That it could be the same for the coccyx, and coccyx pain could come from a problem within the coccygeal disc. And I started with injection of an anesthetic solution into the disc under uh, radioscopic guidance, and it worked absolutely well. The patient was uh, were pain free, so I injected also a steroid. They were better, so I treated maybe ten or fifteen patients like that, and I had a second idea, which is known by everyone now. It was that a standard film was not enough, and uh, it would be interesting to have a sitting film in the in the painful position. So it is as as simple as that, and I had. Uh, with my first patient, I was very lucky because uh, the quality of the film was very bad. It was black, completely black. But uh, I looked carefully at the, at, the, at the films. I saw nothing. And I, uh, I said, this, this, this technique has no interest. And I was with a colleague, a young colleague, maybe with a better sight than me. And he pointed. The, the, the lower vertebra of the coccyx, and there was a luxation, a beautiful luxation at this level. So we started with our first case, who had the most striking lesion of the coccyx, a luxation. And so we, we, we went on with this technique, and uh, eventually I described different uh, lesions, hypermobility, dislocation, uh, uh, spikes, and so on. Quite sure that it is the same everywhere, you know. Uh, it is, uh, uh, I would say, a hidden disease. It's exactly like low back pain. If you look at the textbooks of the last century, and mainly in the uh, 20s and 30s, there is nothing about low back pain. It doesn't exist. There is not one line about low back pain. There is uh, some pages devoted to uh, uh, cancer of the vertebrae or serious pathology, about sciatica, too, but low back pain, nothing. So uh, I think it's the same for coccyx pain, because uh, there, uh, we are not so many doctors to have an interest in this pathology, and in France, I'm, I'm, I'm alone. Now there are some more doctors treating this condition, but uh, I started for 20 years, I was alone. So, of course, I see a lot of patients, but they come from uh, all, uh, all the country, not only from Paris, you see. So, I wouldn't, it's, it's not frequent, it's a rare, rare disease, but it does exist, it does exist, certainly. And it's especially frequent after uh, giving birth for the woman, and of course, if you fall uh, on your buttocks, it may be uh, also a source of pain. So it's, it's not, it's a rare disease, but I have a lot of, of cases because uh, I am known as the <laughs> right doctor, you know. Okay. Uh, of course, they, 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 they want the, the, the doctor to, to fix it quickly. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not uh, so easy. Uh, there are not so many treatments. Basically, there are injections, manual therapy, and surgery. Only three treatments. But many patients think that it's just uh, a matter of 
putting back the coccyx at its right place. It is very frequent that they say my coccyx is displaced, it's not at the right place, and it's very easy, please uh, uh, examine me and uh, put my coccyx uh, as it was before. This is not true, of course, there is no dis permanent displacement of the, of the coccyx, and so this is a, a, a false ID. But uh, when they know that, uh, they have no preference for a specific treatment. Surgery is really a, a proof, it's difficult, it's painful, uh, uh, there is a, a sick leave of three months, so uh, the, when I uh, explain that they are a bit afraid. It's, it's really a, a specialty, you know, to, 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 to read the films, to understand the patient and to know what may work or not work, it's, it's uh, after 10-20 years of experience. So for a GP, for example, it's very difficult to treat coccyx pain. Uh, usually they, they treat with uh, anti-inflammatory, with uh, a donut cushion, and, uh, and that's all. But it's so, so specific, you know. It's very difficult to treat. Ah. The, the first is to have uh, dynamic films. Uh, not so many doctors are convinced that there is, a, that there is an interest in these films. And uh, even now, I see patients who have been operated on with a coccygectomy, and they are still in pain, and they have had no dynamic films before surgery. So they have been operated on without diagnosis. And even now, it's, uh, it's rather common to see that. Of course, not here, not, not with me, but in other, in other part of France, I see uh, some patients without their coccyx, still in pain, and with no dynamic films. So this is not normal. It should be more uh, prescribed, you see. And uh, maybe uh, the other uh, hurdle is from the patient, because they are a bit... Uh, they think that medicine can nothing for them, so they do not consult. Uh, they just see the GP, and uh, and sometimes they have uh, unpleasant remarks, uh, with uh, "It's all in your head. Uh, it is because you are depressed, uh, or it will heal spontaneously." And the worst, that's funny, are the obstetricians, because when when a woman complains of coccyx pain just after. Uh, having uh, given birth, they always say, no, no, it's normal. One time, one say it's part of the package, you know, it, it comes with, uh, with the delivery, it's normal. Uh, just to wait one month or two months, it will disappear. Or some say, oh, it's broken, but it will heal. They are uh, false ideas about coccidinia. I think that in, uh, in this uh, specialty, musculoskeletal medicine, uh, what the patient expects from their doctor is to have a diagnosis. This is very important. And we know that it is very difficult to give a precise diagnosis. We don't know uh, what hurts and why it hurts. But we can at least give something which is uh, correct, which is acceptable, even if it's not precise. Uh, for example, uh, for back pain, uh, I use very often the word of a, a discal sprain, which is very comparable to a sprain of the, in the ankle, for, for example, because the, the annulus is, a, is, in fact, is a big ligament and a tear within the annulus. You know, if you say uh, discal sprain, at least in French for the patient, we say entorse sprain, it's a good diagnosis. It's not something serious. It means that it will heal spontaneously and quickly. And for many, many pain syndromes, you can give uh, some uh, diagnosis which is correct and understandable by the, by, your patient, by the patient. So this is very important. And the second thing is that in some chronic case, you have to listen carefully to what the patient wants as a treatment. You know, uh, Some patients really have a strong desire for such treatment or such treatment. So do accordingly, do what they want. You know and they are happy like that. So.